All right. Well, hello to each and every one of you out there. Lakeisha McKnight is here with Lakeisha McKnight Ministries, and it's about 8.34 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Normally, we get started at 8.30 p.m., but of course, we were just getting things prepared, you know, trying to jump over those hurdles of technology <laughs> to get to where we are today. And so, again, welcome, welcome, welcome to each and every one of you. Uh, what I'm going to be doing now for the next 60 seconds or so is just welcoming people on uh, from the Facebook platform there. We're here live live on the Spreaker platform and this is where um, you know we're going to be doing it live now we do have a chat feature let you know so if you would like to uh, ask questions or comment regarding anything feel free to do so um, as we are here live so it's looking like uh, the platform here is doing a little bit of weird things right now when it comes to sharing uh, so hopefully you are here, you're connected, you are plugged in as we are getting started. I'm going to definitely let people know that we are live, but a different way. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> just, you know, share it with people whom you're connected to on Facebook, Twitter, um, some of the other social network platforms. Let them know that they can just plug in. They can actually get the Spreaker app from the Google Play Store or they can go to, uh, you can go to the Apple Store to get it as well. Understand that with this ministry, we do have our own app. Okay, so we do recommend also that you get our app. Okay, the app would allow you to listen in uh, to archive calls, listen to uh, this particular podcast live, so on and so forth. So uh, what I'm about to do is definitely share this, uh, share this particular show. Because that's what we're here to do. We're here to worship God, but not only that, we're here also be able to share, shed this light uh, in the world. Let people know about the goodness of God, um, and, and definitely encouraging them to to be able to do the same. That once they come in, once they receive Christ into their lives, they'll be able to go into the world and do the same. Go into their jobs, go into different places where God opens up the door and allows them to be. They'll be able to do that. And so, you know, that's just a wonderful thing about uh, this walk is that God, he just, he's just amazing, you know, and what he does and the doors that he opens and we just have to be available uh, for him to use us in, in a strong and powerful way. So, again, thank you, thank you, and thank you uh, to those of you who are indeed present. Uh, and so, like always, before we even dive into really anything, we like to um, open up with a word of prayer, right? And... Definitely get this started and let people know uh, that we want to connect with God so that he can give us wisdom and guidance, even in what we're going to be going over today. So I'm actually typing in I am live now. Join in if you like. Join in. Okay, so we're letting people know that we're live and we're present. So you may be listening right now and connected. So again, if you are live and you're listening to me live, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. You definitely can learn more about Lakeisha McKnight Ministries by going to lmcknight.com forward slash L. M M. So when you go there, we're going to have a page there. If you don't see it yet, we're going to have a page there definitely before the end of the night. We'll have a page there uh, with information about um, 
the series and upcoming series that we're going to be teaching on and up to upcoming courses. And we may even have some buttons for you to click on very soon where you can enroll in some of those courses that are going to be taking place. Um, these courses may be email courses, these, it may, it may be various things, but just to be able to help you uh, with your walk, you know, as a believer. Okay, so again, thank you, thank you, thank you to each and every one of you who have been connected. All right, so let's go ahead and pray. So Father, thank you. We thank you for this opportunity to gather together around the world, no matter where we are. God, we, your sons, your daughters, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your joy. We thank you for your peace and for your patience. Hallelujah. We thank you for the fruit of the Spirit, God, that you birth and produce in us. God, we just ask that you, Father, before anything else, that you would forgive us of all of our sins. Lord, we thank you for the blood of Jesus that washes away the sins of this world. And we place, we've placed our faith in, in, in you and believe in the work of Jesus. We've done that. And we thank you for salvation. And we just pray, God, that you would speak to us, that you would give me the words I'm to say, that I'm to get out of the way, and that you would do the work, that you would do the tugging, that you would do the pulling and the drawing. And so, God, I thank you for the ability to be used of your service. And I pray that you will be glorified in all things, that you'll touch the, the, hear, the ear of the listener, touch the heart of the listener as well. Whether they're, they know you, whether they don't know you, Father, I just pray that your will be done through the purpose of this call in this podcast. In Jesus' name, amen. And so again, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, now, this series that we're going to be doing this week uh, for the next five days or today in the next four days um, is going to be pertaining to how to really pray effectively for the salvation of others. Um, prayer is indeed big. And I think it's important for you to understand uh, what prayer is um, to really understand how to effectively pray for the salvation of others. There are certain things that we need to do uh, when it comes to communicating with God, because that essentially is what prayer is. And it's not a monologue where one person is speaking, you know, and the other person is just doing all the listening. It's not necessarily about that. It's actually more than that. Um, it's a two-way dialogue uh, between, you know, a person, a group, right, uh, and God, okay? Dialogue, which means that, yeah, we may intercede, we may, we may, may pray for other people, uh, but guess what? We're also supposed to allow God to speak as well so we can clearly hear from him and what he has to say to us uh, because it's two-way it's a two-way communication between God and another person or persons, okay? So that's what prayer is. Now, there are different types of prayer, but the one that we're going to really focus in on, because we're praying for the salvation of others, we're really talking about intercession. <laughs> Some of you may be saying, well, Lakeisha, what is intercession? Intercession is when you're coming to God on somebody else's behalf, you're praying for the needs, uh, the, yeah, you're praying for the needs or at least praying on behalf and bringing God uh, the needs or the concerns of another person or another group. That's, that's essentially what you're doing, okay? So I just wanted to put that out there. That's essentially uh, what you are doing, all right? And so, <clears throat> again... You know, this is just, you know, one thing to, to note, you know, about prayer is that there's different types of prayers. Uh, and when you're praying on behalf of somebody else, this that's called intercession. OK, so that's called intercession. You might have just heard just a little bit of me speaking in the background. I just want to make sure that we're that people can hear us uh, live and clear, because I know sometimes there are network errors uh, because of uh, the connectivity of the Internet. Uh, so we thank God that everything is clear. Okay, so now that we understand what type of prayer we engage in on behalf of others, which is intercession, how do we effectively intercede or bring uh, someone to God whom we really, really would love God to touch? 
Because understand, the Bible already says that no man can come to him, right? No man can come to the Father, right? Except he be drawn. So God is the one who does the drawing. He draws a man or a woman to himself. He does the drawing. No one else does the drawing. God is the one that does the drawing. But in order for people to be drawn, okay, there needs to be, um, we can pray, and of course God can do the work in their hearts uh, to make a step forward closer and closer to him, whether it be, you know, at a church function, in their home, it doesn't matter. Uh, people can receive Christ. They can receive salvation anywhere. Location is not necessarily the issue. Uh, what needs sometimes to be to, to occur is for God to hear from you. What is it that you want to see happen for another individual? All right. Um, and he hears the prayers of the righteous. And we learn that from the book of James. It says that the prayers of the righteous avails much, which means that it's heard, which means that it reaches God because we are in right standing. The righteous is those who are in right standing with God meaning that they're in a right relationship. They have a relationship with God. They are walking with Him, talking with Him, um, seeking to do the will of God. Okay? Those who are saved. And so when we come to God first, making sure that your relationship is, a, is adequate, making sure your relationship is, 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 is correct and in a right standing with God, that's critical, number one. Number two, then... We have to understand what is it that we're praying or bringing to God. We definitely, we don't have to have fancy language uh, when we come to God. That's one thing he doesn't want us to have. He talks about that. Jesus actually talked to the disciples about that, that we don't have to have fancy language like some of the religious leaders do. Okay. Big words. You don't have to be repetitious. Okay. It's not about that. Uh, but God wants you to come to him genuinely and, and and make your prayers, make your concerns, your 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 questions known to him, your concerns. He says, Cast your cares upon him, for he cares for us. If we truly care for our brother or sister, aunt, uncle, niece, nephew, mother or father, if we truly care for your business colleague, your friends, quote unquote, on Facebook, if you really care about indiv individuals and their salvation, you would bring these individuals to him before his throne. And the scripture that I really want to reference today, as I know, of course, we're, we're coming soon and wrapping up a few things, but I wanted to point out a scripture. It's actually in 2 Peter, okay? 2 Peter, verse my, I'm sorry, Second Peter, yes, chapter 3, verse 9. You can make sure you jot this down. Of course, you can go back to it if you like. But it's Second Peter, chapter 3, verse 9. Um, I'm going to read this in your hearing so that you can hear it. You don't have to look at it if you don't want to. You can just listen. But if you have your Bible, feel free to turn to it. Second Peter, chapter 3, verse 9. It says, The Lord is not slack. Okay, he's not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness. So he's not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing, or he doesn't want any that that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I'm gonna read that one more time. The Lord is not slack. Concerning his promise, as some count slack, slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Let me break this down and explain, you know, what this particular scripture means here. Okay, the Lord is not slack. Now, what is what does Peter mean by by this? The Lord is not slack. This means that he's not. He's not slow in responding. 
okay? He's not slow in his response, right? Concerning his promises. So he knows, he's aware of the promises that he's made. He's not slow in reacting or slow in responding and in, in, in doing what he said that he will do. And uh, But he's saying that he's long-suffering towards us. What does that mean? Um, that he's allowing us um, and giving us time. He's demonstrating um, a patience for us. Okay, patience and waiting. Waiting for us to, to come to him. Patiently waiting. Because he understands that, you know, I, his measure of time is not our measure of time. As the previous verse says, the previous verse says that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years. And a thousand years as one day. That's what the previous verse says. So our timing is definitely not the timing of God. Uh, but his long suffering, but his but his long suffering toward us, that's God, that's the Lord. Not willing, he doesn't want anyone to perish or to die, right? But he wishes in his desire, his desire that all should come to repentance. All, not Caucasian people, okay, it's not a race factor. It's not just African Americans. It's not just Indian. It's not just uh, those who are Asian or South American. No, he desires, he says he wishes that all should come to repentance. What does repentance mean? To repent means to turn away from sin and to turn and walk in the direction of God. Turn about face, to turn around, a change of direction, right? Turning away from sin, in a different, going in a different direction, going in the direction of, in the pursuit of God and, and doing the will of God. That's what repentance means. In true repentance, that's when you leave it completely behind because you want a new life. And if we pray that particular scripture, and that's what I'm trying to get to, when we come and we're interceding, it's important that not only is our relationship clear, we understand that our, our salvation is sure, but at the same time, when we're praying, we need to pray the scripture, pray the word of God. He said that he's not slack, right, in keeping his promises. So when we come to God and we, of course, pray the scripture, what God has said, his word is not going to return to him void, but it's going to do what it was said to do. He already said that he desires that no one should perish, but that all will come to repentance. So therefore, when you're coming to God in prayer, you're saying, God, you said according to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, that your desire is that no man, right? No man should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And so you're bringing to him such and such, and you can mention their name in the prayer. As you're praying, you know, and just asking God to touch and do the drag, do the, the the pulling, right? To tug on their heart, to giving giving them a desire to have, you know, a relationship and wanting to learn more about God and surrendering their life to God. That's what you're doing. You're praying the word of God because this is what the word says. These are his words, inspired. These are words inspired by God. Of course, man wrote them, right? Wrote them down on paper. But it was inspired by way of the Holy Spirit, by God. Okay? The word of God, the scripture, you know, the Holy Spirit is the inspiration of God. Jesus was the incarnation. God in the flesh. All right? And the word of God, of course, is just the written, that written inspiration. <laughs> it's the written version of the word of God. So I just want you to understand that as you're going forth tonight, as you're praying tonight, know and be sure of your salvation. And then, of course, grab a hold of a scripture. Of course, you can definitely reference 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, that he wishes that all, that no one would perish, but that all would come to repentance. Remember, he's not slack. 
but he's long, he has long suffering with us. Okay. All right. So I definitely want you to just absorb and take that in. Definitely go back and read the scripture and study for yourself. Um, and this is what we're going to be focusing in on for the next couple of days. And if you're listening right now and you're feeling in your heart that God is tugging on your heart and pulling on your heart to, to have a relationship with him, I want to pray with you right now before we depart. I want to pray for you. And then, of course, I'm going to pray for our departure as we depart from this particular podcast episode. And so I just want to thank you so much for listening in. And I want, let's pray for you specifically if you don't know the Lord, if you don't have a relationship with the Father just yet. All you need to do is pray this prayer with me, uh, genuinely and sincerely. <sighs> Say, God, I know that I am a sinner right now, but I know that I need you. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord, and I believe with my heart that you Father, raise Jesus from the grave by your power. And I know because of this, I am saved. Help me to live right, to do right, to think right, and to be in a right standing with you. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you've prayed that prayer, I want to welcome you, my brother, my sister, to the household of faith. Definitely visit. I want to hear from you and I want to help you in this Christian journey because it's not just about a one-time prayer, but it's a daily walk with God the Father. And I want to help you along your journey. If you visit my website, I can help you through this. Okay, so you're not on your own. You can definitely visit lmcknight.com. That's L-M-C-K-N-I-G-H-T dot com. And click on the contact button. There should be a contact button there where you can contact support. And you can just fill out the information there, submit it, and I'll get it. And I'll be returning your, your response. But I definitely want to prepare for our departure in general from this particular show as we're wrapping up. I'm going to be back here tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Lord willing, <laughs> okay? Because, of course, we can't guarantee what's going to happen tomorrow, but we can only pray that we'll, we'll definitely be back here tomorrow at 8.30. So let me pray for our departure. So, Father, thank you so much for my brother and my sister listening in, whether live or to the replay. Thank you so much for them. And I just pray that you would guide and direct us as we depart. God, we just thank you so much for just being here with us, no matter where we are, because you're an omnipresent God. Continue to guide us and direct us in our walk with you. Help us to spend time with you in prayer and in the reading of the word. Help us to pray your scripture. Help us, oh God, to bring others before you. God, that you would draw them unto yourself, that they would be saved and filled with your spirit, God. And so we thank you so much for this opportunity of gathering virtually. And I just pray that your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. So again, my brother, my sister, thank you so much. You be blessed. And I'll be speaking with you again on tomorrow evening. Take care.